1066 is a significant year in English history, and today we are exploring why. This is History Made Easy, the Norman period. leading up to 1066, there had been an uprising in Northumbria against the king's brother, Tostig. To avoid war, Harold agreed to depose Tostig, sending him into exile. Harold knew William I was planning an invasion and could not allow for fighting in his country. When Edward the Confessor died, there were three possible successors to the throne. Harold Hadrada, the king of Norway, who had no blood ties to the English monarchy, but had been wanting to invade for years. Harold Godwinson, a powerful nobleman and a brother-in-law to Edward, and the Duke of Normandy, William I, who was a distant cousin of Edward's and was claiming he was promised the throne on multiple occasions. The claim that William the Conqueror has uh, to England is very, very weak because obviously the, the family connection with Emma of, of Normandy, the, the real um, cause of the invasion is the opportunity. Edward chose Harold Godwinson to be his successor. Not long after Godwinson's coronation, Harold Hadrada decided to invade Northumbria. Joined by Godwinson's deposed brother Tostig, they defeated Morcar and his army. However, they were soon to be defeated at the Battle of Stanford Bridge by Harold Godwinson, who had traveled from London. Many people think oh, it was Harold brought an army up from the south, fought it, and then dashed back down south again. That wasn't the case. It was largely a Northumbrian army with Harold and some bodyguard who travelled up at uh, high speed to resist that invasion. Sensing an opportunity, William I chose to invade the south coast at Pevensey Bay while Harold Godwinson was distracted with events up north. Upon hearing about the destruction William was causing to his settlements, Godwinson travelled from York, where he was resting, to London to gather more troops. Now many people think that Harold um, marched south, and although this is possible, if we look at the timetable concerned, from Stamford Bridge to York, York to London, London down to Battle. The timetable is so short, he would need to be moving a little more than about 30, 30 to 40 miles per day. And although this is possible back then, it's unlikely. Most ar armies would go about 15 or so miles in a day. So it's more likely that Harold and his small force traveled on horseback and that would give them the time that we know from the historical record to get from London, uh, York to London, rest for a few days in London, gather his forces, and then proceed south to Hastings. Earl Morcar and his brother viewed the Godwinsons as rivals and as hostile, so Morcar was in no hurry to, to dash down to Harold's aid. Since 1066, Pevensey has changed vastly. When William invaded, Pevensey was one of many large inlets that created the south coast. Once anchored, William set about creating a typical Mott and Bailey fortification. Because it was made using wood, the exact location of the castle is unknown. Most assume the castle was constructed within the Roman walls that already stood in Pevensey, but not everyone agrees. I am of the belief that the fortress depicted in the Bear Tapestry was to the east, somewhere around Bulverhithe today. So the Pevensey Fort, the Stone Fort, would defend the western and the Bulverhithe Fort, Fort defend the east. With Harold Godwinson making his way to the south coast, William chose the location of battle to fight Godwinson. When Harold arrived, William was waiting and needed to win, otherwise his invasion would fail. So Harold's tactic really was to stand firm on top of that ridge, hold the line, let William batter himself against the line, and then eventually push him down out to sea. Godwinson's tactics came with a famous shield wall. William's army repeatedly ran towards the opposition. However, this was not working. He could not break Harold's line. And then the crucial moment was when um, it was perceived that the Norman attack had failed and a certain number of Harold's forces went after them against his orders and broke down the hill. And then uh, William rallied his troops, turned them around and smashed those uh, soldiers who'd run down the hill. William had destroyed the shield wall and with dawn rising the following day, Godwinson was found dead lying beside his brothers with an arrow through the head. William marched to London and negotiated a rule over the land. 
However, there were forces across the land still trying to attack William. After many years and many new castles located all over the land, William had decided to return to Normandy. Before setting sail from Pevensey, William allocated the Rapes of Sussex. These rapes were handed out in 1067 when William left Pevensey. Most of the south coast was handed over to his relations. What happened was that each rape had a river, a castle and a port. Normans, when they took it over, were very severe about what these rapes were for. They were basically to keep the English in order. William the Conqueror's brother, Robert Count of Mortain, was given the Rape of Pevensey. However, William decided to keep the castle to himself, as it had been developed for royalty. We are fairly certain that what Robert de Mortain did was exactly what his successors did, which was to create a castle inside the fort. He would have picked the northeast corner where he had some good Roman walls and cut a long ditch, put some palisades up so that he actually had a small defensible area. Throughout the conquest, Robert and Odo, the Bishop of Bayeux, had helped their brother, William, to form this great Norman Empire. William died demanding the empire to be split, and they were shocked. William's eldest son, Robert Curtos, was a terrible human and was always fighting against his father. By creating a split, Robert became the new Duke of Normandy and William's third son, William II, became the King of England. Bishop Odo constructed a wonderful plan that they were going to have the Norman nobles in England rebel and then Robert would come over all the way from Normandy with his army and then become king. Initially, Odo's plan was working. That was until William II managed to bring the English people on his side and created an army. While William searched for Odo, the army set fire to Tonbridge. But by this point, Odo had run away to Pevensey and was with Robert, Count of Mortain, as they waited for help from Normandy. Help from France didn't arrive. Robert, Duke of Normandy, had failed to come with the fleet. He didn't really fancy it when it came to it. And the end result of that was that Odo was captured Robert, Count of Mortain, had a son called William. William was never happy and always wanted more land. Another issue with William was that he despised his cousin Henry I. With William II's death in 1100, Henry I succeeded to the throne. With a new king in control, Robert Curtoz attempted a second invasion, and the Mortain family turned against the king once again. While on English soil, Henry made an agreement with Robert. However, there were dire consequences for William, Count of Mortain. He tried to marry William of Mortain off to his sister-in-law, Mary of Scotland. William didn't fancy it, and so he, he was stripped of his English territory. So that was basically the end, the end of William of Mortain running Pevensey. Scared about future revolts, Henry decided to keep Pevensey in royal hands, even though he granted the land to Norman Lord Gilbert de Laigle. Henry died in 1135, and King Stephen came to the throne. Stephen confiscated Pevensey Castle to grant the castle to Gilbert de Clare, the first Earl of Hertford. An 18-year civil war would rampage between Stephen and his cousin, Empress Matilda, after he took the throne away from her. Gilbert supported Stephen after he was given land. However, he was not loyal and switched to support Matilda. Fast forward to 1147, and Gilbert's uncle, Ranulf de Gernon, the Earl of Chester, decided to rebel against Stephen for a second time. Stephen decided to take Gilbert's hostage, and would only let him go if he surrendered all of his castles, Pevensey included. Gilbert was released, and he joined Ranulf's rebellion in retaliation. Gilbert de Clare, the first Earl of Pembroke, who was another uncle of the first Earl of Hertford, rebelled against Stephen after he refused to grant him the castles confiscated from his nephew, the first Earl of Hertford. In response, Stephen confiscated his castles as well. King Stephen no longer trusted the de Clares, and that relationship was over. In 1154, King Stephen died. This was the end of the civil war between him and his cousin Matilda. Because Stephen was pressured to sign the Treaty of Wallingford, Matilda's son, Henry of Anjou, takes the throne as Henry II and removes all the direct links to Normandy. Pevensey is no longer under Norman control. In the next episode, we explore how the Normans invaded Ireland. <laughs>